All right, guys, welcome back for the second episode of our series where we are creating a wallpaper app using ChatGPT, Firebase and Flutter. And today the episode is all about configuring Firebase. So configuring Firebase within our Flutter project using new methods that you'll see is going to be way faster and as well as setting up all of the services that we'll need uh, within Firebase, right? So let's jump right into it. So before we do, uh, don't forget to subscribe, right? Hit the subscribe button. That really, really helps me out. I'll, I'll really love to uh, reach the 10,000 subscribers um, within the week. So please, guys, don't forget to do that. Once that said, let's jump right into it. So a few things we have here the uh, firebase console that is opened up as you can see i already have a few projects because those projects are uh, the youtube channel related project okay so that's one thing the other thing is i have my vs code open right there okay and first we are going to to go ahead and create a new flutter project so what you want to do for me i'm on mac os but it's command shift p all right, so that's going to pop this uh, little window here and I can click on Flutter new project. We're going to create an empty application. It's really uh, the base model that you want in order to start fresh uh, for creating our app. So we're going to say that I'm going to put my, my thing into uh, YouTube and I'm going to select that folder and I'm going to call the app. I'm going to call it uh, wallpaper, wallpaper underscore AI. Uh, then I press enter and as you can see on the left side of the screen we have all of the, the the files that that needs to be there in order for um for uh, uh the flutter project to work okay so that's created um now uh, perhaps i can zoom a bit more you have the the lib folder with the main.dart file and everything so that's pretty much done for now what we want to do is navigate to the console.firebase.google.com okay and you will be here. Then you want to add a new project for here for the name Wallpaper uh, AI for me. You can uh, name it as you want. And here they ask you if you want the Google Analytics. If you're, if you're to um, send this app to multiple users and want to uh, really keep track of everything, that's a good thing to enable. For us, for this uh, tutorial, we're just going to say no for now. I want to say that uh, we'll need uh, three services from Firebase for this project. We'll need the Firebase authentication in order to create an account and to log in to our app. We'll need the Firebase Firestore, which is the NoSQL database. And then we'll need Firebase storage in order to store our, um, our pictures, right? And while I was telling you about that the firebase project is now completed and we are here on the project overview of firebase so as you can see here normally what we had before was only those options right where we could set up one by one uh, ios and then android and perhaps the web as well but now we have a new option which is here flutter okay and in order for us to set up our flutter project with firebase we can simply do that okay so what we want to do is click on Flutter and here you see that you need a few different things already to have. OK, so you need to install the fire, the, the Firebase uh, CLI. OK, so once you have installed the Firebase CLI, then you need to make sure that you are logged in. OK, so we are going to do just that. I already have the Firebase CLI, but then I want to uh, say Firebase login and it's going to tell me if i'm logged in with the right email so yes i'm logged in with the right email that i want otherwise it will just redirect you to um to the right uh to, to the firebase authentication process and uh, you will be able to log yourself in so i'm already logged in so that's good then we already have our project so you can just pass with that things and then here you see that we have a few comments so we need to copy that first comment that's going to activate the flutter fire cli okay so you paste that in and you'd see here i have something that says that my path is not uh, um, right updated so i can just copy that comment that the console just gave me and paste it right here normally that will do the trick and now i can take the second comment that's actually the flutter fire configuration comment right and 
I'm going to clear that. I can just paste it right here. And normally, because I'm connected to the right uh, account, it's going to be able to see the Firebase project that we have and uh, setting up, uh, which is exactly the case. So what we want, we do not want macOS. We do not want web. We just want iOS and Android. OK, so you unselect using the space bar. And then once you're happy with it, you can just press enter. OK. So I'm really happy with that. So I press enter. And as you can see, now is uh, Firebase is setting up for Android and now it's setting up for iOS. And once that command is done running, we'll be all set for uh, for um, having Firebase set up with our Flutter project. So that's the case. That's done right now. And as you can see, we can close that so we can see better. On the left side, in, within the leap folder, we have a Firebase option.dart file and that needs Firebase core, all right, in order to be able to run smoothly. So what we want to do is navigate to the pub.dev website within Firebase core, okay? Copy that package, navigate back to our, to our project, prospect the YAML file here, and under dependencies, we are going to paste Firebase core, okay? And so here you really want to make sure you have the right indentation, okay? Otherwise you will have problems. If you do something like this, that won't work. So you need one tabulation uh, after uh, the dependencies for your packages in order to work. You can save that file and that by saving a prospect that YAML file is going to run a, a pub get command on its own. And this pub get command is now is now enabling us to call uh, the import of Firebase core right here. So we are pretty much done for uh, for this uh, for this setup. The last thing that we want to do is go within the main.dart file. And if we navigate back to our um, Firebase setup, we can click on next and you will see here we need to say that uh, fire to initialize Firebase. OK. And so we want to copy that and we want to paste that thing just before uh, our run app within our main function. OK, we're just going to paste that right here. Up, And this main function needs to be asynchronous then because we have we are using the await uh, keyword right here. And we also need to import Firebase core. OK, and we also need to import Firebase option.dart, which is the file that was just generated with the Flutter Fire CLI right here. Okay. And once that's done, we are all set up for uh, Firebase within our Flutter project. So that's a pretty good step. Well done. And now we can enable all of the services that we want within Firebase. So now our project is finished set setting up. If I reload, you'd see we have two. Uh, to let's say uh, platforms we have the ios platform and the android platform pretty cool so now let's go within the build uh, section and we're going to start first with authentication okay so this authentication part is going to be handling for us the account creation and the signing up signing in uh, for the app so we just want to go ahead and click on get started and as you can see you have a lot of different options uh, in terms of uh, methods that you want to use. You can go ahead with phones, anonymous, email and password, and all of those social media uh, logged in. OK, uh, but we are just going to make it simple and say email and password for that thing. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to add perhaps another one. Uh, I don't know, with phone or uh, something else. Tell me in the comment section and perhaps I'll add that one uh, as well. But now that we have added that thing, it's pretty much done for Firebase authentication. As, as you can see here uh, in under users, it's here that we'll have the records of all of the accounts that are going to be created within our app. OK, so with the user ID that we are going to keep and store within our Firebase Firestore, which is our database and the next thing that we are going to set up. So under build, we're going to go Firestore database. And as you could, you could see here, you, you really have two options in terms of databases within Firebase. You, you either can go Fire, Firestore and you can go real time. OK, so Firestore is the no SQL database and real time is more like a SQL database. OK, I, I'd rather go with uh, no SQL databases. Uh, it's 
those uh, different types of, of databases have the all the advantages and disadvantages but for us cloud firestore is going to work perfectly and no sql databases and as cloud firestore is a document database i'm going to explain to you how it works so you want to set up the database as close as possible to the region that you are um that's for limiting you know the, the the timing for each request and here you have two options either go within the production mode or the test mode and as you can see what is going to change actually are the Firestore security rules, okay? And so that's a, a thing that we'll also talk about uh, and you need to also uh, be really aware of what they're doing. But basically the rules, they are going to allow a user to see a part of a database or not being able to see a part of the database, be able to write within a part of the database or not, you know? It's really controlling all of that aspect. For us, we're just going to go within test mode at the minute. And as you can see, the only thing that it does is allowing everything. So allow write, write, read and write, okay, up until the uh, 3rd of April uh, 2024. Okay, so we should be done by now uh, developing it, but you can increase that date, that date time if you want to have more time in test mode. We're just going to click on create and Cloud Firestore is going to create the database for us. And so I was talking about the fact that the Firestore database is a document database. And basically, you want to see it basically like, uh, let's say, a tree, right? You, you, you're you going to have collection, okay? And those collection, you can see those collection as boxes, okay? And within those collection, those boxes, you are going to store documents, okay? So those documents are within collection. Those documents are inside big boxes, which we call collection. And it's within a document that you actually have data, right? So we are going to have a collection that's called users, okay? Our box is called users. And within that box, we are going to store the user's documents. And so for each user, we are going to have a specific document, okay? So a document for our user is going to look something like this. It's going to have an email. It's going to have a name. It's going to have an ID. And it can have a lot of different other stuff in order to store the data. And from our app, we are going to request documents, okay? You can never really request collections, boxes, because if you request the user's collection, that's, that is never going to give you anything. The relevant information are within the documents that are contained within the collection, all right? And so you can request the collection users, but you are going to get all of the user's documents, all right? But then if you want a specific user document, you can request the right one. Why? Because we are going to have an ID from Firebase authentication for a user. Okay. One, two, three, four. I log my save. I create an account and Firebase authentication is going to give me an ID. This unique ID is going to be the document uh, ID itself within our user collection. And so with that thing, you know, we can create links and then access the right thing that we want. So while this is uh, processing, um, we cannot do really anything. So I will be back once that's done. All right, all right. So the uh, Firestore database is now uh, done building. And as you can see, we have something like this. So this is where we'll have all of our collections and all of our documents, right? This little rules tab is where we have the rules. Remember when we were selecting between production mode and test mode, where this is where you can actually write yourself uh, the um, the security rules. And as you as I, as I can see right now, it didn't really took what we said for the, uh, the uh, test mode. So I'm going to have to modify that myself as well. You have here the indexes. And those indexes are very interesting when you are doing, uh, let's say, a uh, complex queries, right? Where you're using um, filters within your queries. Sometimes when you exceed the number of, of, let's say, where parameter within your query. So if you want to really go down to the, uh, the selection, uh, selection of documents, you will actually need to create indexes. But don't worry, Firebase is gonna, Firebase in your Flutter project 
uh, in the console, if, if an index needs to be created, you'll have a log message that tells you you need an index and it will redirect you to the website to do it. And then here you have the usage table where you can see all of the different usage uh, that is done on the database. So to just to give you an idea here, if you have a collection, let's say users, okay, like, like I told you, you need then a document ID, okay, and this document ID is going to be the same document ID that the one that was provided by Firebase Authentication. And within a document, you have different fields with different types that can contain different values, okay? The thing that you need to know with Firestore is that you cannot store objects directly within uh, the Firebase uh, project, within the Firestore uh, database, okay? So an object is basically a map, okay? It's basically a map, as you can see right here, of something with a parameter, right? A string of uh, a string for a name, uh, a string for an ID, right? And you will need to, to, we will need to decompose our, let's say for now, our user object within a JSON type of, uh, of parameter in order to send it to a Firestore. So let's close that. And the last thing that I want to set up is Firebase storage right here. So Firebase storage is where we can store files, right? And since we're doing this wallpaper app, we want to be able to store the wallpapers. And same thing here. Uh, test mode or production mode. For now, we're going to go in test mode. And uh, since we already have set up uh, the location uh, within Firestore, um, we have the same one for our uh, bucket in storage. So that's building and I will catch you right back. All right. So as you can see, storage has finished building and it's basically what you would expect from, let's say, like, you know, like a file manager place, right? So you can have here uh, upload directly files, right? You can just click on that and upload files directly from here. You can create folders so you can have, you know, a really well separated places. And as well with the rules that we have right here, uh, uh, make sure that users have the right access to the right folders, right? But for now, that's pretty much everything that we'll need. So we have set up Firebase authentication and activated the email and password uh, provider. We have set up Firebase store, uh, Firestore, sorry, um, in order to have a database, okay? I've changed the rules uh, for uh, test mode, right? Okay, so that didn't took it for at the, the at the launch, but now it is. And the last service is Firebase Storage, where we will store our um, our pictures generated by AI. And basically, uh, to give you a little glimpse of what's going to happen, we are going to store a picture here that you have generated with AI. And this picture will be accessible through a new URL, okay? And this URL, we are gonna store within our uh, Firestore, within our database, this string, okay, this URL. And within our Flutter app, we'll call this URL through an image network um, widget and it will be displayed on the app. So that's the three services that basically we will need in order to create our app. All right, I hope you liked the video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Next episode is about the app structure, so I'm looking forward to it, and I will see you there. Bye-bye.